Good morning and welcome to the Pastor's Corner. I'm Dr. Wayne Baker bringing you the Pastor's Corner. And this morning we have a very good lesson. We're going to continue on on the family and the position of the man and the position of the woman this morning. Hello again, I'm Dr. Wayne Baker bringing you the Pastor's Corner. We believe to be the inspired word of God. First, a word of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for all that you have done for us and all that you do to us to keep us from the wind and storms and tempests, to keep us from ungodly things and to keep us under your care. Although we try very hard to escape from your rule, but Lord, where shall we go? If we ascend into heaven, you're still there. If we go down to hell, you are there. And uh, Lord, we yield to you. I pray also for those who are sick and wounded this morning. Some are wounded psychologically. Yet I pray for them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to talk about the position of the man. From Genesis 2. The Bible says in Genesis 2.20. Uh, but for Adam that was not found and help meet for him. In other words, one capable of satisfying Adam's inner longings. His psychological needs. His spiritual needs his physical needs, and his relational needs. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now I want you to notice that God performed the first wedding ceremony. And if God performed the first wedding ceremony, who are we to take people apart and to give a, a writ of divorce? So I want to talk about the position of the man. You see, the man was formed first. Now, I'm not trying to elevate the man over the woman, although God's creation in order is the man and then the woman. The woman was taken out of the man. So man was formed first, uh, then the woman. Position of the man. His position to be, was to be the head of the human race. Head of the human race. And by the way, there is no such thing as race. People do that, people to exalt themselves, to exalt their ethnicity. I dare you find me race in the Bible. It's not there, my friends. I've looked all over for it. The Bible says nationalities. You got genders. You got people groups. You got ethnicities. Uh, and you got tribes. That's about all of it. That's what's in Revelation, the tribes. People of various tongues, nationalities. They appear before the throne of God. So why? Every one, every person on this earth is a member of the human race. Now, I, I dare you think of the man that could, uh, uh, all the races of this earth, all the so-called ethnicity, that is but one race, come from. Every body on this earth came from two people. One person, really, Adam, because God made 
the woman from Adam. So everybody on this earth came from Adam and his descendants. And you see, the thing about color is color is decided by your distance from the sun. Same way with the, the texture of your hair. Man's distance from the sun. So every man is basically born with the same DNA. And uh, it's just the environment that caused the variations in man. When I was at Moody, Dr. B. Wayne Hopkins, who is now going to be with the Lord, he told me, he said, Wayne, so there is but a poor tent furious in every man on this earth. From the African to the European, uh, he said everybody is 99.6% alike. And he said that only a four tenth of a percent variation in the man from the furthest corner of the earth until un, unto uh, the center of the earth. So I want to bring that out that uh, the sun determines the texture of your hair, it determines the color of your skin, and all and everything else about man. Sometimes uh, we get albinos uh, mixed up with the black folk. Uh, we get black folks mixed up uh, with uh, the curses of ham and stuff like that. People, this ought not to be. It ought not to be that we, everybody's a part of the human family. Some people are accept, which is totally against the teachings of Christ. Everybody is a member of the human family. And so even John Locke's theory of um, human dignity and what have you, that should be considered. Everybody is a member of the human race. Now, you can take the color black and get everybody on this earth uh, from that one color. You see, I'm trying to say that we're all alike we're different in culture, there's different cultures, there's different uh, degrees of, of what have you, but in one sense, we're all alike. The position of the man, the position was to be the head of the human race. Man is the head of the human race. Now, women will fight for it, and it, it does not, in this sense, man means the woman too. I'm totally convinced. I don't want to say anything derogatory against women or put women down in any way. But the man was first. And the man, God looks to the man uh, for stability in society, for his spirituality in society, and all things else. The man is re responsible. His position was to live in an environment Feel with the presence of God. Now, if you don't educate your children that God is God, uh, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, then I think you have done them a great disservice because the first thing that a man should do is he is the spiritual teacher of his family. He should fill this earth with the presence of of God, particularly his family. He ought to be the chief person in church with the greater responsibility. Uh, his position was to be head of the woman. And this is indicated he made the man first. Uh, the Bible says he made uh, the woman first. Adam had the care of taking care of the garden. He had the responsibility of uh, marriage. The Bible says that the marriage relationship, I'll be on that next week, is greater than any other relationship because the Bible says for this cause, for this reason, shall a man leave his father and his mother and cling uh, to, to his wife. His position was to live in an environment Feel with the presence of God. In other words, uh, if 
Adam had carried out his responsibility to produce kids like him, uh, this earth would have been filled with the presence of the Lord. He was to lead the family in a God-given direction. Now, one of the functions of the man is to lead. The man has to lead his family. His responsibility is to lead. Lead in what, Dr. Baker? Well, he leads in, uh, in caring for his family. Uh, he leads in leading his family. He leads in protecting his family. He leads in uh, prayers for his family. In other words, he is a leader. And a good leader doesn't do this by saying, I'm your head, I'm your leader. Just be a leader. He was a visionary and leader. Genesis 2, 15 and uh, 16. Let's look at this. And the Lord God took the man and put him unto the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Well, he is the number one caretaker. So my belief is the Bible is saying that a man ought to care for his family before he get married. And Adam was put in a position where he could learn work. He had to work. God created him to work uh, for his family. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. So he gave him a responsibility. He gave him law, and he was to abide by those laws. In other words, he didn't give that to the woman. He gave it to the man. Uh, don't eat of the tree of knowledge. God was saying, the tree in the midst of the garden, that's mine. Don't mess with it. Now, this also can be equated with the tithe. Don't mess with God's tithe. And um, so Adam only had one commandment to keep. And he followed that up. He messed that up. You see, man was given responsibility. He was given a vision by God. And he let Satan steal his, his vision. The male received all of the communication from God. Why did God not communicate with the woman? I, I have looked at Genesis. I don't see anything in Genesis uh, 2 especially where God communicated with the woman. He communicated with the man because God is a God of order. If he had communicated with Eve, then that would have foiled his relationship with Adam. You see, and God communicated uh, with Adam. He taught Adam, and Adam was to teach his, his wife. He received all of the instruction from God. Not only the communication, but the instructions from God. He instructed Adam what to do and what not to do. What to eat and what not to eat. He gave Adam no doubt. It's not in the Bible. He gave him the rules of, of the God probably showed him how uh, to make a living from the God. Everything in the garden was Adam's anyway. And so Adam uh, did not have to work at that time. Work was not created, but he also uh, told Adam what fruit to eat and what not to eat. So it was a fruitful earth. I've seen pictures of the great flood, how it was. Of course, this is imaginary. Uh, man, many theologians uh, put it there. They wrote it and they put it on television. It was a glorious, the flood came and wiped all that away because of sin. Man sin. And don't believe that God overlooks your sin. Uh, you might get by, but you will not get away. Uh, he was in charge alone with no competition. There was no competition that Adam had, not even the woman. You see, if he had given power to the woman, uh, Adam probably would have been convicted because she would have disputed almost everything uh, God said to do. If Adam had said this is a hippopotamus, she would have said probably that is an elephant. 
And so that would have been confusion. But God communicated. He instructed one person and he instructed the man. Now, the man is the head of, of the family. And so if things go wrong, it's my fault. I cannot blame my wife. Things go wrong in the family. It's not her fault. It's my fault because I let it get that way. You see, that's, that's a, a man. A man's responsibility is tremendously above that of a woman. Now, if the woman is not married, she assumed the responsibility that Adam had and the responsibility of a man. But if two people are married, the man and the woman, they have children, the primary responsibility of that family belongs to uh, the man. I don't care how uh, many ERA principles you talk about, equal rights pr principles, I don't care how many abortion rights you women think you have, you don't have a, a right to your body. Your body is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. And uh, we need to stop getting with these liberal women and talking about your body. And I, if I want an abortion, I can have one. No. Abortion is murder. It's killing babies. And you want to please God. I know that you do. Uh, and uh, you are to please God. Get in your Bible. See what the Bible says about these things. So no matter how you may try to be, you may want to be, you are not a man. And so don't cross over into a man's fear. Now, if you're single, uh, if you're divorced or what have you, then your responsibility is to provide and care and what have you uh, in order to fulfill God's will. But do not interfere with, with a man. You can get along. I'm not teaching men superiority over the woman. I'm not teaching that. I'm saying that if you cannot agree, if you, you, you're married, confer with your husband. A lot of women make decisions without even conferring with their husband. And that's wrong, sisters. Confer with him. And I'm sure he'll say, go ahead and, and do it. If it, does, if it does not interfere biblically with his principles or God's principles, go ahead and do it. Uh, and if you cannot reach a, an agreement, it's always the man's call. So the position of the man, he was in charge alone with no competition from his wife, he didn't have any competition from the animals or anyone else on the outside. There's only one usurper that could have ruined this relationship. That was Satan, which he came along later and did. And he put enmity between the man, the woman, and the man and God. If there are problems, in the marriage, uh, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be. It's always competition between the man and the woman. Well, what brings about this competition between a man and the woman? Who makes the most money? Who makes the most money? Uh, who takes care of what bills and what bills? You have an account. She has an account. Uh, you should designate what bills both will pay. Uh, sit down together. Uh, and do it. But that's always a problem in the family. First problem, communication. You don't communicate enough. Second problem, money. Third problem, in-laws. And uh, fourth problem, selfishness. Those are problems in the marriage. But it can be overcome when you trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean uh, to your own understanding. The woman vies with the husband for the head of the family. She wants to be head. Uh, Dr. Hawkins told me at Moody, he was the vice president of graduate school, said a woman will fight for the right to, for headship, but she does not really want to be. And he said that uh, the meaning of the scripture that the woman uh, will desire uh, to rule over you means just that. 
that she will desire uh, to be your leader. But she doesn't really want to. But she fights for the right, for the headship of, of the family. Okay, another position of the man is that he was her teacher. A man is a teacher. Adam was the one God instructed. So if Adam was the one that God instructed, then uh, Eve was the one to listen. Uh, she was a responder. Adam was an initiator. And this is the way it should be. Now, in some families, this is not clear cut. Some families, women are the initiators because probably the husband is timid. Probably he lets her, allow her. I don't know, but in some families, women are the initiators. And, but for the most part, God made man to be the initiator and the woman to be the responder. You see, so much has happened to men, so much has happened to women uh, since our creation, that we are now timid, we're scared, we're laid back, and uh, we're being beaten, we've been beaten down. But he was a teacher. Adam was the one God instructed. He was her protector. Now, this is another thing uh, that the man should do. He should be a protector. If somebody come at the house and disturb your wife, the man should be the first to get up, whether he has a gun or whether he does not. If anybody come to my house, my wife wake up disturbed, which she oftentimes does. She oftentimes gets scared of this and that and uh, it's nothing there, but I would get out of my bed to see what is the matter because I don't want her disturbed. I realize that God has made me her protector. I am my wife's protector. And so it falls on me in this covenant relationship to protect my wife. A man had security and significance. Now, the woman needs security more than the man. The man needs significance. She, a man wants somebody to brag on him around his buddies, how well he does around the house, how he supports his family, and what have you. But a woman is different. A woman wants to know that she is secure in that relationship. Whatever the relationship is, uh, she wants to know that she is secure in that relationship. The man has security and significance. The man had significance. The woman has security. He gave names to all of the animals. He was intelligent. He was a ruler. He was a creator. Yes, man creates. The man had power over all creation. Power to subdue. Power to make. Power to keep the God. A man like power. We like responsibility. He was a cultivator, power to transform the earth, to develop it to his full potential. Well, my time has expired, but really, I was getting into this and you get into it too. Genesis 2, Genesis 3, and Genesis 1 is a great book to develop theology from. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy and your truth that endureth to all generations. Bless the ones under the sound of my voice today in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that someone will be converted and come to you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Now, if you want to join us, we are open. Our church is open at 10 o'clock. Uh, and we are on uh, Mulberry Road. Please come out to us, Mulberry and Morris Dissets. And so, please, we would be happy to have you at our church. We practice uh, safe, safety from coronavirus. And you can write me at P.O. Box 12323, Columbus, Georgia, 31917. Please do. We look forward to hearing from you. And please, please 
uh, pray for us. Now next week we'll continue on this study. We're going to talk about covenantal relationship. Your relationship in your marriage, a relationship with your church, and your relationship with God. I am Dr. Wayne Baker, bringing you the pastor's corner, the inspired way of God. Go to church this Sunday, go to somebody's church. If not, tune in uh, by television and what have you. I'm Dr. Wayne Baker, saying so long, and I'll see you again next week. church that is definitely family oriented and we believe in being together when you're at spirit field you're at a place where you never ever feel alone there's always someone either praying for you checking on you making sure you're good and also spiritually feeding you so we're thankful to have a pastor like pastor wayne d baker who definitely teaches from the heart as well as from a place of education and higher learning we're grateful to have that because he breaks down the word into a place in which you and I can understand and be able to add it to our practical lives every day, I'm telling you. So listen, if you now don't have a church home and you're looking for a place to settle and looking for a place to join and be a part of a family, please come see us at Spiritfield Ministries where it will be the end of your search for a friendly church. Spiritfield Ministries, the end of your search for a friendly church. We are located at 3898 Mulberry Drive, which intersects with Morris Road in Columbus, Georgia. Services begin at 10 a.m. on Sunday and Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. You may also watch our services on YouTube and follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hashtag FF Ministries GA. You may also contact us by calling 706-562-0071 or via email at ffministriesga at gmail.com. We hope to see you there.